Domine, labia mea perie. Etos meum anunciavit The Carthusians are monks, but they're also hermits. Silence and solitude are the two keys of their life. So they essentially live alone in, in a loosely connected community. They uh, pray most of the time in their cells. Uh, this solitude is meant to foster a contemplative life, to really put one in touch with, with God. St. Bruno founded the, the Carthusians. A famous priest who went into the mountains in, in France with some companions and started the first uh, Carthusian life. He loved uh, solitude. You can tell that he found the Lord in uh, the silence and the solitude. The first Carthusian monastery was, it still is, in, in the, the French mountains. And here we're in the mountains again. There are charter houses which are not in the mountains. But the mountains do have a particular kind of rugged beauty and isolation and solitude, which are very conducive to the Carthusian life. Again, the Carthusian contemplative life is hard for people to understand. For example, they live a very austere life. They never eat meat, ever. Uh, they essentially eat one meal a day. They were, the, the choir monks wear hair shirts. Uh, they get up in the middle of the night at midnight and pray the night office for two to three hours every night. And it is a very austere life. And so you would think that that would be a very negative existence. But one of the signs of a a real Carthusian is a sign of joy, and you, when you meet the Carthusian monks, you see a big smile on their face, and their eyes sparkle, and you can tell there is, they're more than just happy. Uh, even in the midst of the austerity, there's a real sense of joy. Dear brothers in Christ, yes, it is beautiful to live our life as Carthusians because we are loved, and it is the friend of the bridegroom whose finger points to the truth that tells us this. The choir monks are always priests, and, the, and their brothers are not. But they have a very uh, similar life, but there are some differences. The brothers still work outside their cells, they're, they're the ones who do all the sort of uh, manual labor. Whereas the choir monks are much more likely to study in cell and s spend more time in their cell. It's two different callings within the same community.
Most lay people probably don't know about the Carthusians, and, but God lets people know. If it's, it's, it's your time, you know, he'll tap you on the shoulder and you'll find out. <laughs> we wouldn't want anyone to be a Carthusian monk who's not called. And it's a, it's a rare vocation, as you know. There's, there's only about 16, 17 monks there here in, in Vermont. So it, it, the, the Lord doesn't need millions, he just, but he needs a few. He wants a few. When you walk down the corridor, you feel this sense of solidness and rootedness. The Carthusian's motto is, the cross stands firm as the world turns. So the notion is that the cross is the foundation of, of, of uh, God's salvation for us. The cross is the foundation of human life. And this foundation here bespeaks of that same rootedness. When a monk dies, they're not embalmed. They're, they're buried fairly quickly uh, in their habits, of course. Uh, the habits are, are pulled down over their faces and they're sewed. And of course they pray and they say they the mass and, then, and they're buried in the cemetery right there in the monastery. And so the graves are unmarked. The Carthusians really live a, a solitary, anonymous life. So they're meant to live a life of separateness from the world, anonymity. The church's notion is that uh, it is God's grace that makes all things possible, and a source uh, or an instrument uh, uh, of, of that grace is, is prayer and the spiritual life. So the monks are especially seen as fountains of grace, that uh, through them God's grace becomes more present and alive in the world. The Carthusians especially uh, pray for people. They, that's part of their, their ministry is to, to pray for the world. And the church believes and the Carthusians believe that their prayers are important, that it, it makes a difference. You move towards union with God. That's, that's the goal of the contemplative life. The goal of the Carthusian life is to be united to the one whom you love, who, who is God. Some people could ask, well, what good is this monastic life? I say it's the essential good. It is the very thing that we're meant for. We're meant to be united to God in love, and so that's what they pursue.